Many times we imagine that as a chemical and process engineer, we are required to know certain type of things, but in reality, we are not. So what are those things? Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And yes, as a chemical and process engineer, maybe being a student, recent graduate, or maybe already working as a engineer, you may be wondering that there are certain expectations from people, your peers, senior management, and so on, and they may not be quite real, or at least maybe you are pushing too much yourself. So let's get clear these aspects that you may be wondering that are required for you as a process engineer, and well, they are not. So let's get started with number one, and it will be actually being able to name certain type of chemicals, understanding the chemistry behind it, maybe even naming compounds and so. Truth is all is that as a chemical engineer, we are focused more towards the process itself, not that much toward the chemistry. And many of our young engineers think that they gotta know everything about the reaction kinetics, everything about the chemistry behind such compounds, and that's actually very far from true. So make no worries, you don't need to understand the fundamental aspects of chemistry, you just need to understand the fundamentals of the process itself. Number two, pretty similar to this, will be understanding the reaction kinetics, all that goes behind that. Eventually what you're going to care the most is simply what is the effect of temperature, the effect of volume, the effect of time in your chemical reactor. You are not expected to actually go to the lab and make certain type of experimentation. As a chemical engineer, you are going to have several type of input variables that are going to be manipulated by yourself and eventually you're going to expect a certain type of output. Number three will be understanding fugacity. And yeah, I know that this may sound a joke, but in reality, there are a lot of terms or concepts that you may not be quite required to understand. Maybe having a overall understanding or idea of the concept would be great, but in practice, you are not going to be calculating that much such concepts, or maybe you are not going to encounter them at all. And I'm talking about entropy concepts, maybe working with the Maxwell functions, talking about chemical potential, activity, many things that you are actually not going to be required to understand. Simply being able to operate, manipulate, and work with the operation of the process. Number four will be working with manual calculations. So back in the day, I remember there were a lot of professors that wanted you to work a lot with numbers, with your notebook, or maybe with your calculator. But in reality, what happens in real life is that most of the data will be already filled up in a spreadsheet or maybe in a software, and you're just going to allocate certain type of data, you're going to write down the input, and eventually you're going to get the results or the outputs. There's no need for fancy calculations or so. The mere understanding of how the fundamentals work and the calculations are done will be good enough. Number five will be pretty similar to this, and it is true that mathematics are great for the chemical engineer, but essentially it is for us to develop a analytical thinking. In real life, we are not going to be solving differential equations by hand or maybe even with numerical method or so. We just need to understand how these things are relevant in applications of chemical engineering. Number six will be related towards actual design of chemical plants. And I know that this may be like the holy grail of chemical engineering while you're studying, but in reality, no one is expecting you to actually be able to design a chemical plant from scratch. What happens in real life is that there are a lot of several teams within the company, outside the company, some suppliers, some sellers of equipment and so, that are going to be making the job for you. So no, no need for fancy calculations on the side. Number seven will be much more towards the actual use of equipment. Many times we have a understanding of how does a reactor work, how does a pump functions and so, but in reality, we don't need to know how to install a pump. We don't need to know how to operate it, how to turn it on, how to improve the RPM. So we're talking about the reactor, how to increase the temperature. That's something that going to be operated by someone that actually has the technical understanding of such equipment. As a chemical engineer, just understanding the fundamentals and knowing the effects of the changes of such specifications in the process is more than required. Number seven is that you are not actually expected to know how to program any PLC or any fancy equipment for automation. There will be a lot of engineers that 
work more towards the machine. You just need to understand how it works and how it affects the process. In reality, of course, it will be great if you can do it by yourself, but many times you just go to the maintenance team, the automation and control team, and they will help you with that. Number nine is you are not required to actually know the cost the pricing of equipment, maybe raw materials, feedstock, and so on. Of course, this really depends on which position you are. If you are in management, it may be quite required for you to understand the prices and costs, but in reality, the process engineer will typically make just adjustments and work with the process itself, the temperatures, pressures, velocities, maybe you're working with reactor times, maybe you're working with certain type of quality concepts, but regarding investment, costs, pricing, is something that you may not encounter, at least in early stages of engineering. Number 10 is that you don't need to know the updated thumb rules that are being applied in your niche industry or applications in your factory. Many times the senior engineer will simply let you know what are the typical rules that are applied maybe for certain type of design, if you're working with a certain type of equipment or with certain type of substance. But overall, the thumb rules that you learn in university may not be the ones that are being applied in your industry. One important aspect that you are not required is the rules for piping and instrumentation diagrams in certain type of industry, in certain type of company, or maybe even within your team. You will learn such tricks while working in the company. You're also not expected, but very welcome, to work with a lot of spreadsheets. Not only that, you're not expected to know how to code macros or work with pivot tables. Of course, knowing how to do it will be great, but most companies will be training you in such skills. You are not required to know how to use any kind of management tool. In the industry, it may be very common that they have very fancy management tools, or maybe even a very outdated tool, maybe calendars or so. But what you're going to be learning there is how the culture is using management tools. It will be very impossible maybe to learn SAP and then learn Oracle and then go and switch maybe towards Google calendars, depending on the way they are doing management. Very similar to this is that you are not required to actually know how to simulate processes or any other CAD software. Meaning that, yes, if you are quite familiar with Aspen Tech software, that will be great, but no one is actually expecting you to know how to use very fancy software, especially in niche application industries. Coding and software programming is actually something that is not quite required for chemical engineers, something that is changing from now on, but of course, Back in my day, it was something that you were not expected to do. If you were required to learn coding and software languages, they will train you there or simply go for a computer scientist or any IT guy. You are not required to be familiar with anything regarding environmental issues, legalities, safety and hazard training or so. All this is definitely for some young engineers. Whenever you change from industries, this changes a lot. So it's very hard for you to keep updated depending on the type of product you're using the type of processes you're working with and the regions that you're working on. And going along with this point is that you are not required to be a master and know it all in your industry. Meaning that if you're working in pharmaceuticals and suddenly change to oil and gas and eventually change to textiles, you are not required to know everything about such industry. Actually, what will happen is that you're going to be trained in the industry, understanding the products that you work with, the feedstock, materials, and so on. Eventually some training on quality issues, but thank God you are not quite required to be a master of all industries. Also, you're not required to know all the top companies. Maybe you think that you should know the top companies, what are the top products, who are the rivals and who sells what and who buys anything. But in reality is that you're going to get trained if required. One thing that you are definitely not required to know is understanding all the legalities that go behind your actual operation. If you're a process engineer, you should stick to the process itself and leave the legalities to the lawyers of the company. You just need to know what is available, what is possible, and what you're going to be doing with the process. And finally, guys, in many cases, you are not actually required to be good with people. What I mean with this is that you are not required to be the guy that is very motivational one or that is always working with the team and pushing them or maybe a leader itself. You are going to be trained a lot. This is true, especially if you are a young engineer. They are not going to be expecting you to be this top tier leader on board because what they're expecting is that you learn that in the company. So that's it guys, 20 things that maybe you were wondering they were required for you as a process engineer, but in the actual application of the industry may not be the case. 
So what are your thoughts, guys? Maybe you think some ideas are definitely required or maybe you used to think so and eventually go to the industry and notice that in reality you were not required to. Please let us know in the comment section so other students and recent graduates know what is actually not expected for them to know. I'm pretty sure that they will appreciate your comments and of course, let's start the discussion. On my behalf, that will be it guys. I'll see you in the next video.